Almost everyone at some time in his or her life has fallen in love with animals. Maybe it was your childhood cocker spaniel, a hog you raised as part of a 4-H project, a cat you couldn't wait to play with at your grandmother's house, or a favorite horse you enjoyed riding at a local stable. For some, this appreciation and love turned into a lifelong dedication and a career in veterinary medicine. I'm your host, Sharon Williams, and it's time for another Your Family Animal Doctor. Today, we'll explore the many fascinating and rewarding career opportunities offered by this exciting profession. You'll learn just what it really takes to become a veterinarian. Where do you start? How long does it take? What does it cost? What should you study before you go to college? The answers to these questions can be very important to prospective students and their parents because they can stimulate both the desire and the dedication required to become a doctor of veterinary medicine. We are fortunate in having a major university right here in Michigan with one of the finest colleges of veterinary medicine in the country. Today, we're going to visit Michigan State University to meet some of the people responsible for making the veterinary program so successful. MSU offers a wide range of educational and research programs covering virtually all the career paths in veterinary medicine. But first, we're going to Roper Middle School in Birmingham to meet Dr. Linda Ashford Scales, a student recruiter, as she explains how prospective veterinary students can prepare for a career in veterinary medicine, beginning as early as ninth grade, and the importance of a student's interest in math and science. Usually, we would start really getting serious at about ninth grade because in ninth grade that starts to go on their transcript to go into college and it's not that the veterinary college will ever see their high school transcripts at all but the, co the undergraduate institution will see the high school transcripts and that the learning that takes place in high school in chemistry biology and math classes particularly are the ones that will prepare them to do well once they do get into college the other thing that can happen in high school is we require 240 hours working with a veterinarian and so we start counting that in high school. So I like to talk to students about volunteering to um, help out at a veterinary hospital or even just observe at a veterinary hospital and to keep a log about where you were, when you were there, what you saw, who the doctors are and so forth just to keep track so that they'll know when they have those 240 hours in. The 240-hour volunteer requirement gives students an opportunity to gain a realistic understanding of the veterinary profession. Sometimes students idol, idealize or idealize their, uh, the profession of veterinary medicine and uh, they think they're playing with puppies and kittens all the time and while that is like a wonderful part of it, we also get some trauma cases and we have to do euthanasia sometimes and of course surgery is involved so there's blood and we like to have students have that experience so they know what they're getting into. Early requirements for the veterinary profession are the same as those required for any of the health fields. Our requirements are biology and chemistry, inorganic, inorganic, uh, biochemistry, physics, math. Those requirements, if fulfilled, will allow you to go into any of the health professions or any of the sciences. And so should a student d get to the point where they're t ready to apply and decide, well, you know, maybe I really don't want to go into veterinary medicine. I want to go into human medicine or nursing or chiropractic or pharmacy or I'd like to be a chemist or a biologist, they can do that very easily because the requirements are not locking them in. And I think that's a very important point uh, for students to understand. It, it is not a narrow field at all. Veterinary medicine offers a world of exciting opportunities, from caring for companion and farm animals to monitoring our food sources. There are veterinarians in research and in government, veterinarians who keep track of animal diseases such as tuberculosis and brucellosis, who care for marine and wildlife, and others who practice veterinary medicine in zoos, even veterinarians in industry. I mean, it's basically up to the veterinarian himself or herself what they want to do with their degree and it is just so wide open. Um, of course most people think of clinical practice and that 
can be companion, which is what I do, uh, dogs and cats, uh, rabbits and so forth. Um, or you can do exotic animals, which would include like snakes and iguanas and birds and that sort of thing. Some people just take care of cats um, in companion animal medicine. Some specialize and do dermatology or ophthalmology or orthopedics. And you go into veterinary medicine because you love it um, more than because you're trying to become rich. Because you love it. That's the most important reason to choose a career. And Dr. Ashford Scales is a real inspiration to any young student thinking of becoming a veterinarian. Now we're going to meet Dr. Dave Sprecher, coordinator for outreach activities in MSU's College of Veterinary Medicine. One of his favorite projects is a program called Veterinary Camp. Well, Veterinary Camp is an opportunity for just about 100 students that have just completed eighth grade to spend a week at veterinary college. They um, are led in teams of 10 by counselors, and the counselors are students in the professional program here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. The students go through both a social and an academic program. We try to do fun things, and we also really try to challenge them and let them know about uh, really what veterinary medicine um, entails. So for example, they spend time in anatomy. Um, they use the very same teaching facilities that our students learn in. Uh, they have a session using microscopes and studying the components of blood. Um, we even take them into the student surgery lab where they learn to scrub and gown and glove and do a mock surgery involving uh, plastic bones. The camp experience is not just academic. Youngsters go to farms with faculty members and to the zoo with MSU's wildlife and zoologic medicine specialist. They learn about working dogs through demonstrations by police agencies and USDA APHIS, the Plant and Animal Health Inspection Service, whose dogs sniff out drugs and contraband at the airport. The important take-home messages from veterinary camp for these children is first of all that they decide if their interest in veterinary medicine is maybe a real interest and by showing them more about the the totality of veterinary medicine and veterinary education hopefully the ones that will be interested continue to be and that maybe some kids find out that well this is not for me while attending veterinary camp is not a requirement for later admission to the College of Veterinary Medicine, it is a fun and interesting hands-on activity, and applying for camp is easy. Enrollment in camp or application to veterinary camp involves filling out a form, um, having their science teacher write a recommendation, and writing a small essay that basically describes the attributes that they might bring to veterinary camp. Um, Something that I'm sure from the children's perspective is very, very valuable to them is the chance that they've had to essentially spend five days under the guidance of one veterinary student who was their counselor. And in many ways, that might be the capstone part of the veterinary camp experience to have picked that person's brain for five days and, and really gained uh, perhaps even a new mentor. The week-long camp for students about to enter the ninth grade is only one of many important veterinary programs offered through the university. For minority students, or those who are economically, socially, or culturally disadvantaged, there's a program called Vetward Bound. Patricia Lowry, the program's coordinator, explains how this program provides opportunities to disadvantaged students who might have an interest in veterinary medicine. That would bound program started approximately 20 years ago when it became apparent that um, students from urban areas, students uh, from areas where particularly their experiences did not include working with farm animals or from a rural background, might not otherwise have an, uh, a set of opportunities to seek a career in veterinary medicine. Many of them knew nothing about veterinary medicine. And so we thought we ought to begin by exposing them, and once exposing them, facilitating their access uh, to this profession, which included not just telling them about it, 
uh, but also making sure they were on track academically to be successful in pursuing this particular program. So in short, this program was started to increase the representation, to increase the diversity of the veterinarians that would be practicing within the state, within the nation, within the world. Students involved in the Vetward Bound program are given academic advice and exposure to the profession through seminars and workshops. They are helped with skill development to assure they know how to study and are able to maximize their potential. The program also includes motivational encouragement to keep students on track, working toward their goal of becoming a veterinarian. There's also a summer residential program in three phases. The first is an enrichment phase, which attracts undergraduates completing their first year of college. These students believe they want to be veterinarians. What they're sure of is that they enjoy science that medicine really turns them on, and they've traditionally enjoyed being around animals. And those three pieces come together, and somewhere they've decided veterinary medicine is for them. That first phase helps them cement that goal, that dream. Vetward Bound students learn how to integrate the science they learn in the classroom and the science that forms the foundation for medicine. In the second phase, students who have made a commitment to veterinary medicine are given extensive training to be certain their skill development is at a level that will make them competitive applicants to the College of Veterinary Medicine. The third level of programming that we do during the summer is for students who not only now who have been curious, have had that curiosity satisfied and are sure that they want to be veterinarians, have prepared themselves well academically to be competitive for admission, have been good applicants because they've been accepted into a college of veterinary medicine, and they come to us the summer between that acceptance and their matriculation into a professional program to get their feet on the ground, to, to become familiar with what this campus is like, with what our faculty expectations might be, and to, to ease that transition from perhaps another institution to this institution, from one geographical area to this geographical area, and to try and just ease that transition into a very rigorous program that really isn't hard but intense. And so those are pretty much the levels of programming that we do. An academic year program that encourages and fosters and nurtures retention, and then a set of summer programs that help students feel their way through all of those decision-making steps to choosing a profession, and in this instance, choosing the profession of veterinary medicine. Many students who might never have had the opportunity will realize their dream of entering the veterinary profession because of the Vetward Bound program. The field has also become extremely appealing to women, who now make up more than half of those enrolled in MSU's College of Veterinary Medicine. Hilda Mejia Abreu of the Admissions Office explains why so many women are attracted to the professions of veterinary medicine and veterinary technology. She believes one reason is that women are now being encouraged to pursue all the science fields, including veterinary medicine. Also, I believe the other piece about the attraction to veterinary medicine, it attracts people that have empathy. We have been socialized to be nurturers, so I believe that there are men that have those qualities too, but women by far have those skills. And I think, in a way, that's why so many women are attracted to the profession. She also encourages high school students interested in veterinary medicine to identify a college prep curriculum early on. Selecting courses.